ROP, or return-oriented programming, is a method of binary exploitation. It's used to work against modern security mechanisms like DEP, Data Execution Prevention, or NX, where the stack, a memory location for running programs, is non-executable. Those security mitigations mean you can't just force a program to do what it wasn't designed to do. You can't just as easily run arbitrary shellcode. And that is where ROP comes in. A hacker or exploit developer can chain together small pieces of program's instructions, what is called ROP gadgets, that include small operations or pieces of code to be ran all before a return instruction. That means that the program will end up jumping around, sort of bebopping around to different locations within the code's own internal instruction set that can still be leveraged and chained together to do something other than what the program was intended to do. But security is a cat and mouse game. As new bypasses or new evasion techniques come out in the open, new defenses and protections and security mechanisms have to be brought forth to stop it. With that said, ROP is not dead yet, but it's getting close. This video is sponsored by Intel to showcase the Intel vPro platform, and we'll demonstrate just how the Intel vPro platform renders ROP, or return-oriented programming, useless, and it is no longer an option for hackers or exploit developers. In this video, we are going to put ROP to the test with a case study of a simple stack-based buffer overflow within a vulnerable kernel driver. This vulnerable kernel driver is called HEVD, or the Haxis Extreme Vulnerable Driver, and it is developed to be intentionally vulnerable. It is created for education's sake, so security practitioners and nerds and geeks like us can learn more about low-level kernel hacking. In a traditional classic stack-based buffer overflow, the exploit works by providing too much data into an input field and taking up too much program memory. Ultimately, this ends up corrupting that program memory and clobbering a very important piece of information that resides on the stack. That is, the program's instruction pointer. The instruction pointer is used to tell the program where to go next after executing its instructions. If you can control the instruction pointer, you can tell the program what to do. Without security mitigations like DEP or NX in place, when they are not enabled, you can force the program to execute shellcode that you might have placed on the stack. That doesn't really require ROP or return-oriented programming unless you tend to use, hey, just one instruction to jump or call to a different location. Maybe then you're using ROP, but in the case that NX or DEP are in place, those security mitigations are enabled, you will have to use ROP. Typically, you'll use ROP to call Windows API functions, to allocate new memory, mark it as read, write, and execute, or RWX, and then you just slap in your shellcode, jump to it, and you're home free. So to start this showcase, I'm gonna be using this HEVD vulnerable driver on an old, dated Windows 7 installation. I've gone ahead and installed IDA Pro to do some static analysis and disassembly, Windows debugger preview for some debugging, virtual KD to monitor the kernel, and ultimately the OSR loader so I can install HEVD and get my vulnerable kernel driver in place. Remember, HEVD is a kernel mode driver. That means it runs with kernel or ring zero privileges. Exploiting a service like that could mean a low privilege user like Joe Schmo could escalate their privileges to become anti-authority system or absolute control over that computer. With that, we can craft a kernel level exploit. For this Windows 7 showcase, I'll put together something in Python and I'll use the C types library so I can access all those Win32 API functions. We'll use the create file A function to receive a handle to our driver and then explore how we can communicate with it. Kernel drivers are interacted with via device IO controls. And there is a Windows API function called device IO control that allows user land applications like our exploit to communicate directly with the driver. The parameter to this function includes an IOCTL or an IO control 
You can think of an IO control sort of like a syscall or a system call, right? That will invoke and run certain procedures or functions via the device driver. Say if you were to send or pass an IO control of one, right? The device driver will then know how to handle and parse and then execute the corresponding functions associated with IO control one. Since this is an intentionally vulnerable driver, the developers have been nice enough to bake in a specific and dedicated function that is readily susceptible to this stack overflow vulnerability. We just need to find out how we can access that. What IO control do we need to send to move down that branch in logic that will end up invoking and triggering the function? Digging around within IDA Pro, we can find that IO control handler function, easily recognizable because it's so wide with a large amount of logic branches and paths to go down. And we determine that our IO control to trigger a stack or buffer overflow is hex 222 or whatever. With that, we know what to pass to the device IO control function, but now we need the actual data. Since we know that we're trying to overflow the stack or provide too much information, we can start with some ginormous payload of like 5,000 characters. We can use a cyclic pattern generated by the Metasploit framework to try and find which offset or what is the threshold or sweet spot where we start to clobber the instruction pointer within our input. Out of all the 5,000 characters of nonsense and garbage that we send, where is the sensitive spot that we start to corrupt program memory and control where the program might go next? Then, once we know our offset, we can allocate memory for our shellcode using the Win32 API function virtual alloc, and then we can take the returned address that it spawned and created all this memory for us and use that as a location to jump to for our instruction pointer within our payload. Now for our shellcode, we will use some shellcode that is very common in kernel exploits, used for escalating our privileges to system. Since the kernel is running with the most privileges and permissions possible, it can enumerate all of the running processes and collect information. So what we will do is we will look through each process and check if its PID or process identifier is the number four. If you're not familiar, the number four process ID is traditionally the system process on Windows endpoints. With that, we will take the system process's token, or the unique identifier that proves and establishes that this process has this specific set of permissions and privileges. Once we've retrieved that system token, we can spawn a new command prop shell that will run with system privileges. That is the token stealing shellcode that enables us to escalate our privileges and fully compromise this device. Now that was the Windows 7 showcase where all works well. But you might be saying Windows 7 is old and dated and legacy and deprecated and end of life. So we want to target something more, more modern, more in today's day and age. We want to get one of the latest and greatest operating systems as our next victim. But there are gonna be some other security mitigations that we run up against. If we try to pivot this kernel mode stack-based buffer overflow into something like Windows 11, there are going to be other roadblocks that we run into, and it's not going to be as easy to accomplish this exploit. Ever since Windows 8, there has been a new security mitigation and hurdle that hackers and exploit developers have to jump over, and that is called the Supervisor Mode Execution Prevention, or SMEP, as I affectionately refer to it as SMEP. SMEP is specifically a kernel exploit mitigation that detects and blocks ring zero code or all that kernel work that we're doing from running within user land applications. That means that the way that we allocated shellcode just previously will not work. If we want to exploit this stack overflow vulnerability, we need a way to bypass or disarm SMEP. Thankfully, one easy way to do this is honestly just simply flipping a bit in a special processor register. This register is called CR4. The 20th bit of the CR4 register is a simple primitive switch that just determines whether or not SMEP is enabled. If we simply turn a one to a zero, then we can turn off SMEP and we can allocate shellcode in user land just as we did previously and go on our merry way. How do we do that, you might ask? Well, we need to ROP. 
to exploit this vanilla stack-based buffer overflow on a modern operating system, ROP is required and it is necessary for a hacker and exploit development toolkit. And this is what I want to focus on here. ROP is practically vital for modern binary exploitation. So let me set the stage for our Windows 11 showcase. I've set up a Windows 11 virtual machine, again with virtual KD, with OSR loader and HEVD installed, and now we can try to exploit this again. This time in that new modern environment. We can build out an exploit in the C programming language this time, and we'll retrieve a handle to the device driver and build out our payload just as we did previously, like with the Windows 7 showcase. But now rather than jumping directly to shellcode, we will need to find and utilize ROP gadgets so we can manipulate that CR4 register. I'll use a utility called RP++ to automate finding ROP gadgets against the NTOS kernel.exe program, which is the Windows operating system kernel executable. I'll look for gadgets like MOV CR4 with any register to move a value into that CR4 register, and I'll look for ways that I can pop a value into that corresponding register that I will temporarily control. I can find some pop instructions and at least get some move instruction that I could work with, and we can carry on. Putting this together in our exploit, adding these to our payload, we can see within WinDebug or the Windows Debugger that a Windows 11 virtual machine will execute the instructions, and we can ROP or utilize return-oriented programming. We can use whatever instructions or ROP gadgets that we want, and the target will willingly comply. With ROP, even if it's primitive, we can continue to control the instruction pointer and essentially execute arbitrary code. That demonstrates that exploitation here is still possible, with whatever hurdles or whatever get in the way, but you can theoretically do whatever damage you want with ROP alone. But let me contrast this with this Intel laptop that I just recently received. Using the very same proof of concept, even without slapping in shell code or following through with the exploit, we will hit a wall that we cannot get past. On my Intel computer, I'll monitor this exploits execution with WinDebug, and you'll see it right away. It fails. We cannot ROP. We cannot even step through our very first POP instruction because we are hitting a much lower level mitigation, and that is Intel CET. Intel CET, or Intel's Control Flow Enforcement Technology, monitors program memory with what's called indirect branch tracking. That means that if any procedure or function starts to branch out or jump to a different location that it wasn't intended to, it will be blocked. We can no longer perform return-oriented programming or ROP because Intel CET also utilizes a shadow stack. A shadow stack is a duplicate copy of the true original and intended stack layout. And at runtime, the active stack from the running program will be compared against it. Any changes or modifications, any tampering or corruption of program memory, including our clobbered instruction pointer, will be denied. Up against Intel CET, we cannot perform this simple, basic buffer overflow exploit. Intel CET is included with the Intel vPro platform, alongside all of their other security defenses that make up the Intel hardware shield. Personally, I am a huge fan of this Intel vPro platform, especially the Intel hardware shield and specifically Intel CET or Control Flow Enforcement Technology, because I attended a course at the Black Hat USA Security Conference. I attended the training for advanced Windows exploitation, one of those super sweet trainings that builds you up and is a prerequisite for some big name security certifications or industry titles like offensive security, exploitation expert, and the class is all about low level hacking, like taking advantage and compromising kernel drivers, or breaking out of virtual machine sandboxes, or web browser exploitation. Just super cool, sleet stuff. And I remember vividly when the instructor said out loud, Intel CET, paired with other modern security mitigations, has not been beaten. There is no known way to defeat this and exploit this vulnerability and others like it when Intel CET is present. And so does that mean, like it prompts the question, is ROP dead? Is binary exploitation solved? Are applications never ever going to be exploited and compromised again? 
No. Well, Rop is not dead yet. But if anything, it's I think it's due, and the, the instructor said this, just because it has not had enough devices using this technology yet. It, it needs to be brought more into the market in the industry. But look at how cool this is. Like a kernel mode exploit that would readily give the attacker exploit developer full system level permissions and privileges to fully compromise this device. Just blocked because of the Intel vPro platform. I think that's wild. In my opinion, it is just honestly a game changer within cybersecurity. And I hope it gets you excited and interested about how you can get this as a core part of your security stack. Hackers, threat actors, advanced persistent threats, all the vulnerabilities out there on the security landscape, whatever the adversary may be, the Intel vPro platform makes things more secure. It is defense in depth. It is protection at its core and then throughout each and every layer of technology that makes up your device. It is the Intel vPro platform that puts up a shield and protects you and protects your device, your devices, your endpoints, your organization, and ultimately protects our industry. Please take a look and give it a try. See how the Intel vPro platform can elevate your security posture. And huge thanks to Intel for sponsoring this video.